Brendan, did you hear that? Yeah, it's starting up right now. Okay, thank you. Should be good to go. Morning, Jerry. Good morning. All right, Mayor, I think we're ready to begin the meeting when you are. Then this is the Finance Committee meeting for the City of Branson via Zoom, Thursday, March 25th, 2021 at 10 a.m. Begin with a uh, roll call, please. Simmons? Here. Akers? Here. Buckley? Here. King? Milton? Here. Pinkley? Here. Yancey? Here. Romine? Here. Dobbins? Melissa, Stan is here. He's having a problem with his computer speaker. They're working on it. He said as soon as he um, gets that fixed, he'll join. Okay. All right, Mary, you have a quorum. All right. If you all uh, would, I'd like to begin with a prayer. Lord, we are thankful for your goodness. We're thankful for your blessings. We're thankful that we're able to come together, even in difficult times. We ask you to give us the gifts of discernment and wisdom as we seek to understand and to follow the needs of our finance committee to serve the city. Lord, you bless us so much. We thank you for this time together. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Regular agenda. Uh, I believe the uh, approval of the minutes is the first item. Is there anyone who would like to make a motion and a second to get this on the floor? This is Pam. I'll make a motion to approve. This is Rod. I'll second that. Thank you. Motion's been made and seconded. Are there any additions, corrections, or clarifications from the minutes? Hearing none, I would ask that we do a roll call vote. Simmons? Yes. Akers? Yes. Buckley? Here. Milton? Yes. Pinkley? Yes. Yancey? Yes. Romine? Yes. And Dobbins? Yes. Thank you. At this point in time, it's, uh, we're ready for the uh, presentation of regular reports. All right, let me just get that open for us here. Is everyone able to see that okay? I'm sorry, Jamie, you're muted. I just asked if you could zoom in a little bit more, please, bit more. Okay. just to make it a little bit clearer. Thank okay. you. Okay, so um, I will start off with our March receipt. So this is mostly going to be January business activity for our sales tax. We were down 4.9% compared uh, to the previous year. So our total receipts were $871,163. I just once again want to speak a little bit to the Department of Revenue. We seem to be having some of the continuing issues, although I will say um, Jamie has reached out to them several times. They are taking a little bit more of a proactive um, position as far as contacting us and letting us know of some of the potential issues. Um, one of the biggest things that I'm seeing, are I had 32 new businesses on my report this month. And when I went to pull the location report to see where these businesses were located inside of Branson, um, there were no records. I contacted Department of Revenue and I was only able to get um, business locations for five of those. So this is an ongoing issue, something that we're gonna have to watch um, because we do track tip areas, we do track um, economic activity according to location in Branson. Whenever we get to the ro rolling 12, you'll see that. So um, it's a little difficult right now to make sure that we're getting um, the correct receipts on these businesses just because I, I don't have any actual data um, you know, of, of their business address here in town. 
Hey, Melissa, real quick. Um, I just want to let you all know that I, um, we've reached out to them several times, the assistant director as well. Um, we continue to um, send them emails, show them what the errors are. Um, some of the errors are as simple as very basic accounting, tying what your money you're going to send back to the report that you give. That should be something that's ever so simple that is just simply not happening. So we have um, talked to them as well. We did reach out to MML as well too, because I wanted to make sure and see what other cities were seeing our county is also having some of the same issues. So we notified MML of the issues as well to see if they could give us a little bit more help into trying to get some of these corrected. Otherwise, what we continue to do is what Melissa does, um, and she does very well. She, she reconciles siles and crosses what the finance does with the business license to know exactly um, what we should be getting and why. So we're able to question them and some of the smaller cities don't have that capability. So um, I just kind of want to give you a brief, Melissa, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just wanted to tell you what we were doing to try to help clear up this matter. Go ahead, sorry. Um, so um, as I reported, our monthly receipts for sales tax were down 4.9%. This year to date puts us down 9.6% compared to last year. Um, so again, we will continue watching the rolling 12, which uh, you know I'll be talking about here in just a couple minutes um, and comparing actual business activity to the month that it's occurring in. Um, right now, I think that's probably our best gauge to see where we're at and where we're headed for the year. Melissa, this is Larry. Question. Um, on the screen, it's showing uh, the year to date 2021 is down 72%. I'm not sure. So that's Am a I... budget. Oh, I'm so sorry. So that that line needs to be deleted because right that I would do at the end of the year whenever we were calculating everything. So right now it is showing it's down 72% compared to an entire year's worth of activity. So when I say we're down 9.6% year to date, I'm actually looking down here at this line. Um, and that's just looking at a receipts from January down to March. So Larry, I will cor correct that because we are not down 72.6%. We've only met 70, we're down compared to the entire year for the first three months. So that's not an accurate amount right there. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, our next report here is the half percent transportation tax. It's essentially going to mirror what our sales tax percentages are down. Um, so again, we are down 3.9% um, year to date and we are down nine points, or I'm sorry, 3.9% for um, month over month and down 9.6% year to date. And I hope I can get it down to public safety. And again, public safety will essentially mirror the transportation tax. It will be a little bit different just because the transportation tax has been collected for a lot longer than the public safety has. So it's down 3.8% month over month and it's down 9.7% um, year to date. Again, this is March receipts for January business activity. Does anyone have any questions on those before I move on? But you're not really comfortable with those figures based on your contact through the, the Department of Revenue. Well, I, I think the important thing to remember whenever we get these, what we receive in the month, it's not so much that we're not comfortable, it's just simply what the tax receipts are. So there could be a lot of different factors. Um, you could have tax receipts that come in a lot faster than they did the year before. You could have tax receipts that come in a lot slower the year before. Um, there are a lot of different um, you know, factors that could influence the way that receipts come in. And so that's why we do look at uh, the rolling 12, because we do put them in back into the actual month yes. of business activity occurs. It does take a little bit longer. Um, you have an, about an extra month or two lag on that. And um, each time that we do receive the taxes, 
we do go back, I'm still going back all the way into 2019 and updating those month by month numbers as they come in. So about midway through the year, I'll stop updating the 2019 numbers on that rolling 12 and we'll just update 2020 and 2021 numbers. Because by that point, a couple of years into it, you've received most, most of your taxes by that point. Okay. Thank that you. Sense. You're welcome. So for our tourism tax receipts here, so um, our February receipts are actually mostly for January business activity. So January was up 6.4% compared uh, to January 2020 business activity or February receipts. And year to date, we are looking at a decrease of 7.9%. The next report here, uh, these are going to be the same numbers, except we break them down by business classification. So you can see all the classifications here that we track. Um, and so year to date, um, amusements are up 22.6%, theaters are down 38.4%, um, hotels down 15.9%, campground is up 14.6%, night, night rentals are at 45.5%, and restaurants and concessions are at 2.6%. So when you see an increase in our um, tax receipts, you can actually see which categories are doing better and which categories are doing less compared um, both year over year and same month comparison. Hey, Melissa, quick question. You've probably answered this before, but I've forgotten. But Stampede, are they considered theater or amusements? You know what that designation is? Yeah, they're theaters. Okay, got it. Yep. And we're going to switch gears here and go down to our rolling 12 report. Okay, so this is the report that we like to look at most. Um, so um, you can see actually it goes all the way back up into 2018. Um, uh, so right now we're still looking at December business activity. So next month I will start with January. Um, again, the reason for that is just because we have tax uh, receipts that trickle in over time. And so if I showed you January 2020 at this point, um, it just wouldn't be an accurate representation of what we were actually doing in that month. So right now at this point year end, um, our December was down 12.9% compared to December of uh, 2019. And then you can see here each of these columns represents a different um, economic area of town. So when I'm talking about uh, on our tax receipts not getting the addresses needed, this is where you're going to see the impact on that. If I don't have an address for a brand or for uh, you know in Branson for a business, it's going to be represented here in this rest of Branson um, category. So we'll just have to watch that as we go along, and um, you know you don't want the rest of Branson category to get out of hand. Um, because you're not going to have an accurate representation of what's actually occurring throughout town on that. And then the second page here of our Rolling 12 report, um, this is going to be an annual growth in the economy. So normally I would tell you that um, it would be as if, you know, the year end in November 2020. Well, this is actually year end December 2020. So this is going to be our fiscal year. So we were ended the year down 19.9% compared to the entire year of 2019. Um, and then again, we break it down by category. So you can see um, which economic activity did better and which act economic activity did worse compared to the last year. Yes. Melissa, this is Michael. I had a quick question of all these categories. Is there one that the state is failing to report on more often on the properties than others? There, I mean, I'm not seeing one economic activity area over another. Um, I'm not actually sure why there are businesses coming in that don't have addresses. Uh, because even if they were, let's say, a special event, a one-time business coming in, you know, for a function that's here in town, they should still be represented and have an address tied to it. So if it was someone coming in for like an event at the convention center, it should still be providing that address that they're, that they're at here in town. So, um, you know, if it's a bigger business, it's a little bit easier for us to spot just because we can cross-reference it with our business, our business licenses. And so we'll know, um, you know, okay, this is actually where this business is located and it's a little bit easier for us to get it fixed with the state. 
Um, the other aspect of that is when we have a business that comes in and applies for a license, we do make them provide us, it is a requirement for them to provide us with a sales tax license that has their actual business location here in town. So, so most of the time it's accurate. That's why I'm a little confused why um, we still have businesses coming in that aren't tied to specific addresses. And some of the DOR issues are they'll actually put businesses on our report that don't even belong in the city. So those, that's kind of the opposite effect, um, you know, and that's what she has to deal with is she has to look at that report very closely, analyze it, figure out, are these in our city? Or are they not cross-reference it, pull them out. So it's just a little bit more analytic work that she does. She does a great job, but it's both sides of the fence. If you, if you think about it that way. And all of that skews the numbers that we're looking at now. The question that I had also, Melissa, real quick is, uh, does like, well, month to month, to month uh, on nightly rentals is up 62%. And so are th those are obviously being reported. So remember, though, on the nightly rentals, those are tourism tax. That is something that oh. we collect in-house. Yeah. So we're very Sorry, confident yeah. in those numbers. It's, it's right, when it comes you. to the sales tax, transportation, and public safety that we have a lot of questions. Understood. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have any questions on this report? So Melissa, so uh -huh. when you actually um, figure out the addresses for these um these businesses, would you go back in and readjust this report right here? Will you go in and like, if it, if you've got something in the rest of Branson, will you move it back? If it's a Branson Landing or Branson Meadows, will you readjust those numbers then? Yes. And, and we um, will have to keep track of that because you know, so much of the sales tax revenue, if it's Branson Hills or Branson Landing is tied to the TIFs. And so we have to watch that. Uh, the other thing that we do when the Department of Revenue sends us, um, because we did again get this month where my tax reports did not match what was actually being deposited into the bank account. So that's another one of our checks that we use um, to track issues. Um, we got another list of businesses that were, oh, we'll just delete these lines off of your tax report. We don't do that. <laughs> um, we keep them on there. It's our stance to ask the Department of Revenue that once they have their issues corrected, that they send us an updated report. Um, and then I will go through and remove those businesses based off of what they provide to us. Right now, whenever they send me a business that says this should not be on your report, I highlight it, I mark it so that I know um, that it's not correct, um, but I don't actually change my report based off of that. Okay, so we will move on here to our unrestricted reports. So for our sales tax for the month, we are looking at a decrease of 89,801 um, spendable dollars. Um, again, one thing that I want to note here is right now we are not tracking on the sheet the aquarium at the boardwalk. So they opened November, they have started reporting their, their taxes, um, but because it's one singular business, I cannot put that on this report. Um, because that is their proprietary information and I'm restricted by law from sharing that. So one thing that we did want to discuss with you all is how you would like to see this report going forward. Do you want us to continue breaking out these different districts? Would you like to see it as one lump sum? I don't think at this point in the year that I can actually change all of this just because you would be able to go back and track down and figure out how much the aquarium was making up. But starting next year, I could make adjustments. Um, and so instead of breaking it out, Branson Landing, Branson Hills, it would just be one lump sum of um, you know, TIF districts removed. Do you all have any special requests or anything that you would like to see on that? Well, Melissa, it sounds like since you're restricted by where you could identify individual businesses, that doing a lump sum would take that away. Mm -hmm. uh, so I realize this year we've got it set up the way it is and it'll be and when we adjust to compare to past you're going to have to go back and lump sum those figures so that there's a true comparison so uh, 
that's my opinion is that the lump sum is probably the, the best way to do it, but I'm more than willing and want to hear other input. Well, so this is Larry. Um, I, we, we need to report that revenue and I understand the dilemma, um, but instead of continuing the way it is right now for the rest of the year, not including the aquarium, um, would it be possible to start whatever's realistic next month and include the aquarium? Um, and like Mary Aker said, putting in it a lump sum so we don't have any proprietary information. Um, but I'd sure like to see the remaining nine months of this year, what the actual total was. Oh, Jamie, you muted yourself. So going forward, we could probably change this report and do a lump sum. However, we won't be able to true it up going back for this three months, if that makes sense to you. Because what Melissa said is extremely accurate. We can't even um, do a calculation to where you could back into those numbers because again, it's proprietary information. But right. potentially um, going forward, we could do a lump sum starting like with April or May. Um, and we can discuss the possibilities of doing that and just to make sure that we're covered and clear. Um, but I do agree with um, lumping it all together, especially because um, on the rolling 12, she gives a really good breakdown of here's the landing, here's the hills, here's the shops, those kind of things. So you can really go in and see um, how the TIF's doing in that area. So, I mean, we'll, um, if you'll give us a little bit of time, we'd like to discuss that internally just to make sure um, that we are... Uh, going according to our regulations, but certainly we'll look for the rest of the year to see what exactly we can do. And then maybe next month at our finance committee, we'll bring it back before you all to discuss that. And if we have options or uh, even if we find out an answer, maybe we'll um, accommodate this report in, with the answer that we're given. But we would like a little bit more time just to make sure that um, we are following the regulations we're given. Sure. Yeah. Jamie, this is Rod, and so that's my only comment, and, and I think you just covered it, but you wouldn't want to immediately take this report and redo it so that somebody could back back into a number. So mm -hmm. as long as we're mindful of that or you're mindful of it, so that's fine. Okay, um, so moving on, when we look down here at the bottom of the report, so year to date, we've seen a decrease of 280000 um, spendable dollars. Again, this is just our 1% um, sales tax monies. And then here on this report, um, one thing that I do want to note, Mr. Romine reached out to me this morning um, over here in this far right column. Now, I want to say all these numbers that are here in the center, these are all true and accurate numbers. But this calculation here was um, comparing this amount to 2019. So I have an updated and corrected sheet that I'm going to show you that's comparing our 2021 receipts to our 2020 column here. Yeah. So this is actually what that column should look like. So again, these numbers did not change. It was just this calculation here in this far right column. So um, for the month, we saw a decrease in our tourism tax dollars of 26,484 spending spendable dollars. And year to date, we've seen a decrease of 249,000. Does anyone have questions on that one? We'll move on uh, Melissa, that, that is uh -huh. that should be 2021 at the heading of that, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, I just closed that out. Um, I can look. That's at right. This one here, though. Yes. So we're looking at 2021 over here, compared to 2020. So this, this column, this is not the, this is the one that was posted, but this is what was updated, okay? Yeah. Okay, and then next here we have our um, budget reports. 
And so I asked Melissa, I would like to take this budget report. And, and I, I want to do that because I, there was a question asked, I believe it was during the board meeting this past Tuesday. So I wanted to uh, make sure and show you exactly um, what we did. So I believe the question was asked and I don't, I think maybe Larry, you asked it, but I'm unsure of who asked it. So I just wanted to make sure that you all are aware. So for the budget for 2021, if you look at the bottom on the total, it says 9.5 million. Okay, so that's the sales tax budget that we assumed um, for 2021's income. And for the COVID budget income, just to give you a picture the normal 2020 budget income, we were conservative them as well, but we put it at 10 million, a little more than 10 million. The COVID budget changed to 7.5 million. So in reality, the COVID budget was 7.5 million. The 2021 um, budget was set at 9.5 million. I fully anticipate that we're going to exceed that just given um, all of the business activity that's been going on during spring break. It's been very encouraging to see that. So I anticipate we're gonna exceed that. Those are conservative numbers. But then um, 2022, uh, we assumed back up at 11.3. So I believe I said we stair-stepped it up, but I wanted to show you the numbers and how we did that just for um, complete transparency so that you'd be able to identify that on the reports that we show you. So on this one, it's 2021, it's 9.5. Um, and we did this report, we started creating this report because we're a tourism town and our financials, it'll show you a budget percent and how you look at those, but that's if everything was straight lined over 12 months and we could easily um, assume that that was the case. However, since we're a tourism town, we have a lot higher activity months than other months. And so we wanted to be able to, over a four year average, give you what months would be up, what months would be down and how our budget fits into those months. And so that was the, really the purpose of the report. And if you can see month to month um, on the monthly budgeted amount, over a four year average, we're 33.8% above what we assumed. And then on a year to date average, we're 11.8% above. So that's really the uh, purpose and the intent of these reports um, is, is because we're a tourism town to give you kind of a gauge month to month on, are we hitting some marks or, or are we down some marks and those kind of things. So that's what I wanted to point out to you on these reports. Um, and then I'll go to the tourism tax one as well. Give me real quick. Yeah, want, sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you for following up on that. Thanks. You're welcome. I just I wanted to make sure it was clear because some of these reports, this uh, tourism tax report is very much the same. We assumed a seven point three um, million dollar budget, um, and last year, I mean, COVID, we took it down by forty five percent as well. So, if you can, um, seven point three was the same amount of stair step as we did the sales tax for. We were really trying to be conservative, but if you look at your February and a month to month, and again, this is a four year average. Um, you're at 105% month to month over budget, okay? And then year to date, it's a 70.7%. And if you think about it, because of uh, the stair step and because of the unsurety of the, this year, it is going to be a really conservative number. I fully anticipate exceeding that just because of the amazing spring break that we've had already. However, um, conservative is best in my opinion. And so that's um, that's where we fall. And this uh, report right here will help you gauge that month over month and year to date. Is there any questions on that one? Okay, go ahead, Melissa. Okay, so um, I don't really have anything to add. I just want to know when Jamie's saying, you know, our March receipts we've had such a good March, we're not going to see those until May, just because we will be collecting those in house in April, and then it will be beginning of May before we're able to actually release those numbers. So mm -hmm. that's the only thing that I'd want to add. It's just there's a little bit of a delay there. And this report will look even better when those numbers come in. So you can you can really gauge the activity based on the averages. So this is a good report. So this is the report that you do in-house, correct? So that's yes. where the confidence in this is very realistic and 
as the numbers actually come in, correct? And all of those previous numbers, 2016, 17, 18, 19, those are all audited figures. Um, So the 2020, we are about to start our audit as we speak next week. So um, all those other figures are audited and you can have confidence in that as well. Very good, thank you. You're welcome. And that will conclude my report unless anyone has any additional questions. Melissa, thank you. Any questions? All right. Let's uh, move on to the next area. Uh, review of disbursements and approval of disbursements, unless, Jamie, you have something you want to do in the meantime. Uh, well, I'd like to go through the, the monthly financials just really okay. quickly. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to stop me. Um, but we'll start with the general fund, um, as as we typically do, and you'll see that the revenue is uh, 4 million um, versus 5.6 from last year. So we're capturing ground. There's a few things that I'd like to highlight. Melissa, can you scroll up to the general fund, please? Thank you. And maybe zoom in just a tad. My eyes aren't as young as they used to be. Thank you. Is that big enough for you? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I got my glasses on too, so that's helpful. Okay, so license and permit fees. Um, One positive note here is that our building permits are up by more than 50,000. And with that, our technology fees are up quite a bit as well. So those numbers, if you do a comparison year over year, you'll see that. I mean, some of the things that we look for, and I spoke to this a little bit earlier, but when we do the um, expect 16.7%, that would be assuming that we were straight line. That's why we do that budget report I spoke on before. So it's a really better benchmark if you look at year to date actual versus last year and the year before to kind of gauge um, for the um, income statement where we should be. So taxes are down 3.4% versus last year. And remember last year was pre-COVID at this point in time. And so um, then you have your licenses, the permit fees, your charges for services and all of those. So total revenues were 4 million versus 5.6 from last year. And expenditures um, were 1.29 versus 1.24 from last year. One thing to note is that the, in the non-departmental, if you recall, we just uh, about a month or so ago paid out the incentive fee to the convention center when we did that in the previous year before. So that's a little bit of anomaly too. So you'll see that um, true up here in a little bit. And then if you'll scroll down, Melissa, and then you've got your uh, transfer ins and outs. And one of the things that I wanted to speak to on this report is I know that last time when we had the finance committee, you all asked us to like better define the um, financing sources and uses. We have on there, we have transfer in from safety, transfer in from tourism or transfer out to those specific funds. Okay. So that what that should do is that should say, okay, well, if there's a transfer out from the general fund to the public safety fund or to the tourism fund, then I should be able to go to that tourism fund and see a transfer in of the exact same amount. So that should be helpful in explaining what exactly that is. So like, um, the subsidies for the park, the park subsidy. If it's a subsidy, we generally like to say a subsidy on there. So to help explain it a little bit. If we had to put a full blown explanation, it it gets it hard to fit it all on one page and it extorts it a little bit. So is these, are these explanations um, sufficient for what you all would like to see or is there something better that we can do and maybe Uh, maybe put a legend or something on a separate page to help define it. We're happy to do that, but we wanted to kind of walk you through um, the other financing sources so that you could really see that the explanation is there and how you can cross-reference it. Anybody have any preferences there on that one? Jamie, this is Larry. Um, I understand what you just said, and and I know we want to keep this concise, um, but I think adding in whatever you ask, but adding an addendum or something with further explanation um, that could be referenced to um, would provide more clarity, I think. 
So maybe um, if we do a legend at the beginning of this report that says this means this, yeah. um, this transfer means this, this transfer means this, it would typically, it would be a one-time thing to where you would be able to refer back to it on an annual basis because the transfers are typically the same month over month if you're talking about debt service and stuff. So if we do a legend, it'll be a separate report, but maybe I'll put it in front of this so that you can identify that just for a particular, is that is that something that might be um, sufficient? Well, I think it would be for me until I see it, but I, I'll follow your lead. Um, yeah, okay. I think that would help. Yeah, and if, if it's just a one-time thing that you can refer back to, we'll put it out there with our reports and you can always refer back to it if you need to. Um, yes, we'll have that next, next finance committee. Jamie, I think what you've done here is real, uh, really good because now you can go over to the other pages and you can say, well, there's a transfer from this account you go over to that account and you'll be able to see the transfer in. So it's tracking. Uh, and if there's any additional explanation that's needed, I can see the ledger being used for that to help explain. So I think you've done an excellent job of on this page, in my mind, of being able to audit by going over and looking at the actual transaction in that other fund. So thank you. Um, certainly, you're welcome. And then um, just really quickly on this one, you can see the unreserved fund balance is 7.3, um, 7.26. Um, so, um, and I will speak to that really quickly. Um, I did say that we were uh, about to start our audit. So um, we have everything prepared. It's a virtual audit. They may come down later, but what we do is we upload all of our schedules and stuff and they will review it and ask their questions and those kind of things. However, our fund balance is a little bit higher and we anticipated that, but that was because of COVID and how we had to stop our capital transfers, all of our one times, those kind of things in preparation for the unknown. So you'll see that get a little bit higher um, going forward. Melissa, will you change to the next fund, please? Thank you. This one is your public safety fund. Um, and you can see uh, this one will kind of mirror, this is the half cent tax, your total revenues 942 versus 1,077 from last year. Total expenditures are 1.6 million versus 1.7 um, from last year and 1.482 from the prior year. So um, if you'll go down the other financing sources and uses, um, you have 979,000 versus 1.3 from the previous year. And just keep in mind that um, the previous year was 2020, but we had not yet reduced the subsidy at this point last year. So that's why you'll see that difference. Okay, we can move on. Convention Center, 355,000 versus 404 from 2020 and 441 from um, 2019. And so um, the expenditures are 587, 889 versus 797, um, 190 from last year and the previous year. So you can see um, the net change in the fund balance was about a drop of 232,797. But then if you come down to the other financing sources, um, we have already given them to this point in time $435,837 to help offset some of that. Their ending fund balance as of right now, according to the end of February is 297,299. If there's no other questions, we'll just keep moving because there's a few other things I wanna discuss later. Okay, so here's the tourism tax. Again, um, your taxes, Melissa just uh, reported to you what those were. So 1.3 million versus 1.5 from last year. And you're at, your expenditures are 1.9 versus 2 million 35 um, from last year. And if you wanna scroll down to the other financing sources, again, you're at 315,000 versus 246 from the previous year. A lot of these transfer out, um, you'll see the marketing transfer out to the convention center and a lot of our debt service as well. You will also see at the very bottom line of the other financing sources, the transfer in from the 76 CID 
Um, and that is regarding that $9.2 million that the CID elected to uh, reimburse the city back from the segment um, one or phase three um, that was already accounted for. So that is the reimbursement from the CID. Uh, we're at 14 million, 15,000 um, for the tourism tax. So if you wanna scroll down, please. Excuse me just a moment, this is yes, it. Sir. Sure. Step away just a moment, I'll be back. So Melissa, do we need to wait or do we still have a quorum? We still have a quorum. Good, thank you. Okay. okay. So um, the transfer tax, transportation tax is 998,439. And last year it was 1.1 million. You're gonna start to see things change as we get into the month of March and April, because those are the months where COVID began and things will start to adjust from the previous year. Um, and so um, just a heads up on that for the future. Um, 378,000 was the total expenditures as of the end of February. 399, um, 393, excuse me, um, was last year. So the other financing sources were 402,000 versus 423 from last year. So that one's pretty much um, on the mark still as well. So you have 3.6 um, million in that um, fund balance. So we'll keep moving. And this is your debt service fund. And this is the TIFs, the transfer ends and the transfer outs to your debt service, 2.9 versus 4.2. Um, from last year, a lot of that has to do with your taxes and the TIF districts and how those work. And if you'll scroll down um, the other financing sources, you can see the transfer ends from there, from all the other funds that we just talked about. You have a $17.8 million reserve there. A lot of that is wrapped up in your debt service reserves and your bond issues for the TIF bonds. Okay, we can keep moving. Again, this is your debt service fund for another bond issue. Um, not a lot going on. This uh, used to be the Branson Meadows TIF. That TIF did go away. We have $3.2 million um, in the reserve and that is a debt service reserve. And you'll see that payment come towards the end of this year. Okay, keep moving if we could. Jamie, Not a lot going on. Yes, sir. I apologize. I, I, for those of you that aren't aware, I have been completely in the dark for three weeks. Uh, when I left, we had not yet received our payment from uh, DOR, uh, I'm sorry, from uh, MoDOT on 76. Did we ever receive that? We did. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, we got it. I think you'll see that come across next month. Now we had to go chase it down and ask for it, but we were happy to do that. Okay. Well, I was just concerned that was supposed to be uh, something they, they, uh, we negotiated and they guaranteed. And then uh, I, I just didn't want to drop that ball. Uh, but uh, my wife has been extremely focused on the fact that the surgeon told me I was not to do anything for three weeks. So she like even turned off my internet. <laughs> so I've, I've been away, uh, but I, I wanted to make sure that's one item. Uh, the other was that uh, I would like to make sure that uh, you, you're talking about March. Uh, I had the opportunity, I was contacted by the Lodging Association uh, last week and uh, they were completely sold out of all rooms in the city of Branson for last weekend. And uh, we're extremely appreciative of, of everybody's efforts uh, for the city on how well that uh, last weekend was going to be for them. So they wanted to, I wanted to share that with the finance committee of, as well as the board of aldermen because uh, they, uh, they, they felt very, they feel very positive and, and I, I think we all do. Uh, and also I wanted to make sure to say that I appreciate all the hard work, Jamie, that you and uh, your folks have put in. I, I get to see it every day. So sometimes I forget about that. Uh, everybody else on here, they see it, but they don't see it as much as I do. And, and it, uh, you've done a great job helping us, uh, helping me anyway, make decisions to guide us through this. And thank you for that. Thank you. Amen. Um, 
Um, Melissa, I forgot what fund we're on. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this is the Capital Projects Fund. There's not a lot going on right now because as you all know, uh, based on the budget, we didn't include a lot of capital projects in this budget. Um, and we did not include, um, we did not include uh, the one times. And just as a recap, in July after our audit uh, in June, after the audit is complete, we're going to go do uh, go do another reevaluation of the financials for this year, and in hopes that maybe we can release some of those one-time in capital dollars back into um, the city. Um, and stand that just for your benefit, the amount of that check for Modot was five hundred and twenty-two thousand four hundred and sixteen dollars. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so we'll keep moving. Hey, Jamie, if yes. you reevaluate at whatever time and then you want to reintroduce some of those dollars um, for projects, which is which is awesome if we can do that, then does that just take a budget amendment? Do you just bring that forward? It an will, amendment? and typically yeah. how we do that is we'll bring it before this committee um, for discussion. Um, after after uh, Stan and John have made their decisions, we'll bring it back for this discussion, and then it'll go to the board as in the form of a budget minute for final decision making. Yes, sir. Okay. Next fund, please. Parks and Rec. Okay, so the Parks and Recreation Fund, they're sitting at $164,058 versus $170,527 from last year. And if we can scroll down, um, this is a fund that is very uh, seasonal in nature. So um, that is another thing where you pay close attention to how the ebb and flow works and and some months are a lot higher than the other. So here's your expenditures, 314,606 versus 305,363 from last year. Um, we did reduce their subsidy as well. So you can see that reduction um, in their other financing sources. Their ending reserve uh, balance as of the end of February is 873,897. We can keep moving, please. Um, and this is just all governmental funds, everything we just talked about uh, merged into one fund so we can show government. This is your proprietary fund. This is water sewer. Um, and so one of the things I wanna talk about is um, on the water sewer, um, typically if you look at the sewer, it's down quite a bit um, from last year at this time. And that was due to the timing of the sewer bills and when they went out last year, they went out February 28th. This year they went out March 2nd. So the Mar the February bills will be on the March one. So it's a little bit of a caveat there, but every time we see that um, anomaly, I just wanna explain it to you um, to give you a little bit clearer vision. So like next time you will see a March most likely too, but it'll true up the year to date to sewer billings because of the timing of which we sent them out. And um, so we'll go to total revenues as a million seventy four. Whoops, sorry, Melissa. Thank you. Um, versus last year was one point three, and then um, total expenditures was one point nine versus last year one point nine. Just a little bit different there. And then you had your other financing sources, and so your ending reserve balance is sixty five million one sixty eight. One thing I want to I think I say this all the time, but I, I really want to um, drive it home that that fund balance is not all spendable cash. A majority of that 65 million is wrapped up in assets. It's not cash spend. And so you can go back to your balance sheet and see what the unrestricted cash and the cash levels are um, actually for the water sewer fund. Okay. And then the next couple of funds are your internal service funds. Um, Melissa, we'll just try to move through. This is the capital fund. And um, this is 145, not a lot going on there. You can see some sewer system connection charges came in, but not too much because we haven't done a lot of capital this year. So that balance is sitting at 4.2 million. We can keep moving. The next one should be about the 146 fund. Again, the same picture, not a lot moving because this is a small capital fund. Didn't, haven't done a lot at the beginning of this year for that one. And then we can keep moving. 
This is your internal service funds. This is for water sewer. And you'll see several of these internal service funds. Um, and those are monies that we transfer in. Um, and we just started that recently, a few years back. We're very thankful that we have that. It's money that we're able to transfer from the major fund into an internal service fund for upkeep, maintenance, those kind of items, especially items that come up um, that uh, maybe is an unknown that we haven't planned on, but that just happens and we can use this money for maintenance and those kind of things. This is also um, the vehicle lease fund that we pull those, that money out as well. So, and that one's for water sewer and we have one for, you can keep going, Melissa, thank you. This one is your public safety. Majority of theirs is, um, their vehicle leases. Now I will tell you um, with fire, you can see we were able to still keep the 500,000 transfer in there. Um, and so you'll see that coming in as well. So um, we're trying to prepare for another fire truck as it's coming up and it's a need. So that's what you'll see for the public safety internal service fund. And if we'll keep moving again, this one is for parks. And this one has come in handy. Um, and they have, you know, they have a lot of maintenance for like 5,000, 3,000, those kind of things. And sometimes with their budget being so tight, it's a little bit harder. So this, uh, this has really helped them out. So we're very thankful for this. Their ending balance is $141,800. So we can keep moving there. And then this one is your transportation. So we typically have an internal service fund for a lot of our major funds and there is a purpose for them. And um, so um, if you'll scroll down, Melissa, please, the balance, that one is 148,000. A majority of this one will be your vehicle leases as well. Um, okay, we can keep moving. Thank you. Um, this is your general fund. We had to stop that transfer in this year because we had set in the original budget for a $350,000 transfer. Um, we could not do that. And, um, and a majority of that um, internal service fund for the general fund will be IT related. So I'm hopeful that um, we can get that back and soon. Um, okay, let's keep moving. And then this is just a combination of the proprietary funds. So internal service funds, uh, by the definition, they are proprietary funds. So what you'll see um, when the audit is done in our CAFR, which is our comprehensive annual financial report, what you'll see is you'll see all of the internal service funds roll up into one fund, um, the one reporting fund, because it's a proprietary fund. So you'll see them, but I like to separate them out so that you all can gauge um, really for transparency purposes, you can gauge where it's coming from and what the fund purpose is for. But for the comprehensive annual financial report, you'll see it all roll up into one fund. Okay. And that um, we, um, if, if you want me to, we can go on to the um, operating cash by fund. Um, and I'll just briefly highlight on the balance sheets. Again, you can all tie us out, but there's a couple of things I wanted to touch on with the operating cash by fund report. Okay, if you'll scroll down, this is your operating cash by fund. If you're gonna notice there's a difference down there um, of 139,799, that is an entry. If you, go to, um, if you go to the public safety one, I will show you how to, how it comes across. That is a timing issue on a journal entry. No, I'm sorry, Melissa. The, um, the public safety cash by fund report. I believe it's number two. Maybe three. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so you can see that 139 on the transfer entry down there as well. So you can cross reference those two. That's where that difference is. Okay, and then there's one more um, issue. And what I always say is um, you can always check us by going back and tying back your fund balance to your balance sheet. And then you can always check us by tying the balance sheet cash by, back to these reports. So you have some assurance when they all tie together. And I'm going to show you a really good example of that, that, that what we're reporting to you, we also have in the bank and investments. So that should give you some security that um, how those all tie together. If you want to do that in depth of research, that would, it's all out there for you. Um, but on 
there's one balance sheet and it's the 146 fund. Um, the fund balance is fine, it agrees, but there is one entry I'm gonna show you. One more, there you go. If you look, this is your 146 fund, this is your small capital. So if you look at that cash and investments, it says 944,000. If you go back to that operating cash by fund report, it'll say 771,000. And so at that 146 level, okay? If you'll go back to the balance sheet, this is, this is an example um, and this was an entry we should have done before we closed this month, but I'm going to show you the difference. The difference is that liability that accounts payable dollars, 173. So your fund balance is still the same. It's just an adjustment of the liabilities, which would have drawn your cash down to that 771. 771 correct is correct. And the fund balance is correct. So that was a simple uh, journal entry that should have been done prior to closing of the month. Okay, so we're going to true that up, but I wanted to give you a really good example of um, it is an error because that entry should have been done, but that's how you would check us to know um, and ask those kind of questions. Um, do you have any questions regarding that? I wanted to use it as an opportunity so that you all could see it. Um, and then you'll, you'll look at the fund balance and it is all the same, but that's one that we we caught and it had already been posted. And so we're going back and fixing it, but I wanted to show you how to check us and how to really review it if you wanted to do that. Okay, um, if there's no other questions, um, then we'll keep moving. And I think um, that will be my financial report. That was the balance sheets, the cash by fund. Um, the next couple of reports, those are the business lessons, the liquor lessons, um, and those really are just for informational purposes only so that you can see what's going on. We are in the process, um, just so um, you all can understand where we're at. If you recall, um, at the end of last year, the CARES money actually was able to um, reimburse us. We got online modules for business license renewals, liquor license renewals, um, and tourism tax. And so we were able to get that. We have had some issues with the operating software company being able to train on that. They were supposed to train in December, then January, then February. Long story short, the training is coming April 1st and that should go live simply right after that training comes. So we'll have those modules. The best thing about that is the county CARES money was able to pay for those modules. So it'll be a, a great benefit to our city and um, it'll be a great benefit to us as well. But I wanted to show you, these are the new business license, the liquor license, and um, since purchasing is also in our department, so we like to put out the, um, the bids that we've done so far this year, just to kind of keep you updated as to where we're at. And those are for informational purposes only. Um, but if you have ever any questions, we also, um, the consumption reports uh, for the water sewer billings, um, those are out there as well. And that is another report that will help you analyze the financials to give you some assurance um, on the other end as well. So we like to put everything out there. If it's too much, y'all let me know, but I'd rather give more information than less. Okay. So um, these are some of the reports we started doing about six months ago, just to keep you in the know and on the up and up. Okay, um, Okay. so that will end those reports as well. Jamie, yes, if sir. I may go back to that new, the business licenses, I know we've all been concerned about how many businesses we've lost over the last year. Uh, however, each month seems like we have a tremendous number of new business licenses. Could you compliment or comment on that? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, certainly. And, and some of some of that new business licenses could be businesses moving to new locations or new addresses and they're required to come in and get a new business license. So, I mean, what we could do to help you understand that is maybe put an asterisk or something by the business that is an existing business, but maybe move to a different location, those kind of things. So, um, but we have had a whole lot of businesses coming in, um, some new businesses, which is kind of exciting. We've had 
as I said, the building permits and those kind of things are up this year as well. So um, we have had an influx of those and we're getting more and more as that um, time is coming due. So, but, but your question brings up a good point. So we probably should put an asterisk and we'll do that next time as to the existing business that are just changing locations and uh, maybe business name, those kind of things. Okay. Is that Thank helpful? You. Very helpful. Thank okay. you. And that's a helpful column. I mean, we wouldn't have known to ask a question like that if we didn't have this every month. So I appreciate that. You're welcome. Jamie, I have a question. Um, sure. I do. Bob, thanks for bringing that up. That was, that was important. Do we have the ability to show like what the net difference was? Net, we lost X number of businesses. We gained so many businesses and the net difference is X. Um, financial difference or just in terms of business? Business, just business. Yes, we could probably add a column in there. It will just, just so you know that net difference, obviously until we get through the major part of the business license season, it will drastically go up and down and change. But um, yeah, we can certainly add a column in there to show you the difference between businesses that have not reopened versus um, businesses that have reopened. Yeah, I know um, at the chamber level when I was a director, they would show how many new businesses joined the chamber, how many left the chamber, what the net difference was. I just think that'd be helpful. Okay, sure. Um, we'll, we'll work on that for next time. Thank you, Jamie. You're Any welcome. other com comments or questions for Jamie right now? Are we ready to move on to review of disbursements and approval? Yes, thank you. Okay, so this is just a review of disbursements. The descriptions are pretty much self-explanatory, but I'm happy to answer um, any questions on this one. And this one's for January, and I believe there's another one out there for February, so you'll be able to see that too. Any questions on that one? We'll move to February. Here's February for you. Um, yeah, if you could scroll up, there you go. All right. Jamie, just one, one comment. I know that a lot of individuals are getting big increases, particularly in their electric bills. And I'm hearing uh, issues with other utilities also and, and so on. Are we seeing any huge increases in our costs compared to the previous year? I haven't done an analysis on that and I certainly can, but I would hate to speak on that until I was able to do an analysis sure. on it. But yes, I will do that. Um, we have a spreadsheet that keeps all of that information and I can get that answer out to you all pretty quick. Yeah. If it's doing what it individuals, it's going to increase maybe what you plan to budget for it. So I just was letting them know. Sure, and that but, freeze will probably yeah. have a, uh, increase in our expenditure too. Yeah. But well, I'll, I'll, I'll look at the actual numbers for you and um, get something out to you all. Hey, Jamie, you could also, if you want to reach out to the utility companies, they track information that gives you either heating degree days or cooling deg degree days information. And um, I don't know the numbers, but I'm guessing that would have been huge increases for heating degree days across the board so from previous month and previous year so they can they can maybe help you okay. with that information so then that just um is helpful for for people to understand as well sure will do thank you okay. yeah you're welcome good point all right are we ready to uh approve the dispenditures it's disbursement, excuse me, of over $15,000. i would make, make a motion to approve the expenditures. That motion's been made. Is there a second? This is PM. I'll second. Do you have a motion? Second. Any additional discussion? Roll call, please. Simmons? Yes. 
Akers? Yes. Buckley? Yes. Milton? Yes. Pinkley? Yes. Yancey? Yes. Romine? Yes. Dobbins? Yes. Thank you. Welcome. The uh, last item on the uh, agenda shows to be a project status report. Okay. Um, Melissa, can you pull that up, please? There's not a lot of change going on on this project status report. However, as I typically say, uh, I'd really just like to keep it in front of you because those projects are not done. Those are large projects. It's got a lot of history on it. So you can kind of see spent year to date total project um, amount on this report. And that's really what it's for. So as we um, kick this, some of these projects back up and get them running, um, you'll see more activity come across on this project. And that's really all I have to say for that report, unless there's any questions. Obviously, uh, uh, this report just shows where, where we are, the, the, the debt that we may need to incur to get the project finished and so on. So it's good information looking to the future. And um, we thank you for that. Uh, keeps us up to date. Any other comments or questions? Uh, Mayor, if I may. Sure. Uh, Jamie, uh, you, you've been real good to sit in on the uh, 76 CID meetings, and I, I hope you continue to do that because I think as, as those projects begin to move again, that's going to be critical that you're sitting there so that you are not left out of that circle, and uh, the, I hope that continues. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have um, every intentions of sitting in on every monthly meeting going forward because Thank you for that. I, I will certainly do that. I, I will say this, that uh, that was one of the items that uh, we noted on what we felt was a error uh, on the 76 project. Uh, last time, uh, the finance department was not part of that group. Mm -hmm. And we have corrected that, that they are now not only a part of that group, but they will be leading all of the financial discussions in that group uh, to make sure that we're, we're, we're going to be able to pay as we go and not uh, incur a, a ton of debt, uh, as well as keeping a better eye on the financials that, uh, I, I again, I'm, I'm a frank guy, you all know this, I thought that was one of the deficiencies that we saw was that uh, we didn't have a, a keen financial eye on uh, where all the money was being spent and that uh, it wasn't being tracked properly. So uh, I, I guarantee you, Bob, that is one of the, the priorities on making this more of a team project, uh, especially for transparency's sake and making sure that uh, the, the second thing was, as we all know, was the change order process. And the finance department should have been actively involved in that as well, uh, along with uh, some other members of the city that, that uh, kind of got cut out for some reason, but that, that, is a, that is a promise as long as I'm alive and sitting here that we're gonna have much better oversight than we had last time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Thank you, Stan. Jamie, is there anything else you wanna share? Well, I think yeah. if we're to the director's report, um, I have a few things I wanna share if we're at that point in time. We are. Okay, so um, many of you know the American Rescue Plan Act has, has come out. Um, we call it the stimulus package, but um, we have been doing a lot of research through our association. There's a couple of different associations that we are a part of that send us information on how that's going to work. Also, our financial advisors from Columbia Capital sent out a white paper really identifying really the purpose of that. So I just kind of wanted to run through just some of the higher end items with you, just so you're aware of that. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to send you some of the information that I have as well for if you just want something to read. So um, some of the takeaways from the um, American Rescue Plan is that there's gonna be $130 billion um, for states, I believe they said territories, I'm sorry, $220 billion for states, territories, and tribes, and then $130 billion for local cities and counties. And how that's gonna be broken down 
is for populations 50,000 and over versus populations less than 50,000. And so the ones, the category that we fall in, which is less than 50,000, it is allocated solely upon population. Um, greater than 50,000 are allocated according to a formula that is um, created by the CDBG, the Community Development Block Grant. But since we fall in the less than 50,000, what applies to us is that it's gonna be allocated solely by population, okay? And so um, they, they went down and we were provided earlier in the week really what Branson is going to receive. Um, and it looks like we're gonna receive about $2.142 million. Um, we're gonna receive 60, I mean, 50% of that now, 50% of that in 12 months. And the populations, the city populations that are less than 50,000, um, the federal government will send that money to the state and then the state will begin issuing those dollars. So for probably, I would assume around about the end of June because the state should be getting them and dis um, distributing them, they should receive their funds around mid-May. So we probably will, I will look, I'll say conservatively the end of June when we will get um, and we'll probably get about a little more than a million dollars, about a million, a million dollars, 7,000, something like that. And that's what we'll get. And that should come to us from the state. Um, there are the state's going to have money and they're going to have possibilities. They're getting quite a bit of money and um, the county is also getting quite a bit of money. And so we don't yet know exactly how they're going to be handling their funds, but we are keeping an eye on those funds as well because we have projects and items that we would like to, similar to the way we did for the CARES money, go after and make sure that um, our city um, is able to um, tap into some of those resources as well. So just to be on the lookout round about June, we should get about more than a million dollars and then 12 months, um, we'll get another million. The uses of that Thank money, you. yes, Thank sir. You, Are there gonna be any restrictions on how you can use those dollars for yes. specific projects or whatever? Yes, and there's, there's um, and I'll send you out this white paper from Columbia Capital. I thought it was really just a down to earth paper mm -hmm. um, and they wrote it specifically for that way for your benefit. But the restrictions, it's a little bit, if you can imagine from the federal government, it's a little bit vague on restrictions versus uses. And so the Government Finance Officers Association has broken it down into a chart, which was a good chart. If y'all are interested in that, I be glad to send that one out as well. And they broke it out into a chart of uses versus uh, there's two restrictions. And so I reached out to um, the National GFOA Association and I asked, because one of the restrictions is a reduction in sales tax. You can't use it for a reduction in sales tax. However, one of the uses is revenue loss. So for me, the revenue loss use was not clearly defined it just said revenue loss. Well, most municipalities revenue loss is what? Your taxes aren't coming in because the country was set, shut down. So I reached out to them and I simply asked a question, can you please define for me the difference? And so um, apparently a lot of cities have asked that same question. So they're going to be breaking it down even further to define that for us. Um, because all of the money that we're given has to be spent by 2024 and has to be used for the purposes that they have laid out. So I think there's going to be more information coming um, and we have to restrict these monies. Um, we were also given a heads up that um, you may want to put these monies in a separate account for clear restriction, not necessarily create another fund, but just put them in a separate account until more clear um, direction has come out. Now, this white paper came from Columbia Capital and their uh, financial attorneys, and they really have laid it out and they really think that we'll be able to use it for uh, to replace some of our operations from a reduction in taxes. And um, so we'll just have to wait and see um, more, um, more documentations come out for clarity. We will be audited 
severely on these funds. So we just want to make sure um, that we use it for that purpose. But this is a really good thing. I, I believe we're going to be able to use it to maybe replace some of the revenues that we lost, which is which is a great um which is a great thing. Obviously, COVID is a big one. Um, and I will um, pull down some of this for you so that you can see. Um, it gives me a, a paragraph of uses and expirations and how that works and how the transfers are going to be identified and um, reporting and how we're going to have to work it, those kind of things. So I think there's going to be more clearer identification come out on the uses and how we do that. Um, but we are certainly tracking that. We're watching it every day. Our team here at the finance department, we have a meeting set up on Friday between several of um, the managers in this department to talk about a plan on, on what we're going to do with this money, how we're going to clearly identify it, how we're going to track it. Um, and so I think it's very important that we make sure and have that all lined out prior to getting that money. So that's, that is what we're going to do. Also, we're looking at the money that the state's been given and that the county's going to be given. The county's getting more than 10 million. Um, and I just can't remember the number off the top of my head that the state's going to be given, but it's pretty significant. So we're watching um, those and the criteria for those to see if the city will be able to tap into some of that and be able to use it as well. I know I um, got a report from SimCog yesterday on the possibility of maybe tapping into some of that. If all of you remember off the study session from last week, um, it was reported that the wastewater treatment plant, the grants that we're going after, um, we're still going to have a gap of about 3.65 million that this city will have to come up with to complete that because all the costs, um, you know, expenses are just climbing. Cost of living expenses are climbing. Gas prices are climbing. It's just, it's, you're gonna start to see that. So even with this wastewater treatment plant, their expenses are climbing. So we have about a $3.6 million gap there. So I reached out to the Southwest Missouri Council of Government and I asked them, what could we do? What kind of funds could we potentially tap into to help offset those funds? And one of those was the American Rescue Plan that the state monies. So we're gonna be watching that. We're gonna be going after that as well. That's what our planning session on Friday is about to make sure that we have a plan set in place before that money gets here to know which direction we need to go. I just kind of wanted to uh, share some of that with you. If y'all want any of the documentation that I'm using, I'm happy to send it out um, for your benefit. So um, I just wanted to touch on that during my report so that you would have an update on that as well. Is there any questions on that? Because I have a couple more things and then I'll be done. Yeah. Hey, I'm I, yeah. I, I, go, I'll go ahead. Um, mine's real quick. Uh, Jamie, is there a commitment? Uh, deadline that they've already proposed for that money? Um, you mean the American Rescue Plan for the amount Correct. the city's I going mean, to that, it, that the funds have to be committed by? The, well, they've already established how much um, the states, the locals are going to get. What I've been told is that mid-May, they're going to be distributing those funds. So mid-May, even to the populations over 50,000, those will come to those cities directly from the federal government. So their distribution period is from the mid to end May. But our state will get ours first, so it'll take, there'll be some lag time for that. Um, and then the state has, I believe, a 90 to 120 day requirement that they have to distribute those funds to the cities by. So mm -hmm. there are requirements put against the state in order for the cities to have their money in a timely fashion. Is that what you were asking? Partially. The other piece is, is once we receive those funds, is there a threshold or a timeline for commitment on our part to we use have, those monies? We have to have them all spent by 2024. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Simmons? Jamie? Yes, thank you. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. this would be almost impossible to do this totally equitably, but it sounds like in reading and what you just said, that the uh, we're a city of 10,500 at the last uh, uh, counting. However, we certainly host more than 50,000 almost every day. 
And so we come out on the short end of the equity part of it, as far as I'm concerned. So I'm very happy that you are looking at these other sources and, and the tourism areas, any tourism area is gonna be that same way. And they're the most hard hit areas perhaps in the country because of that. Uh, so I'm certainly glad you're assessing all these other monies to see if we might get help from there also to make it a little more equitable in total. Thank you. You're welcome. And Jamie, all I was gonna share was, I know you're gonna be citing on Friday, um, from a, on a, from a business standpoint, when we received like our PPP monies and that, we did put it into a separate account. So it made it so easy for an audit. It was dollars in and dollars out from that account. Jamie, this is Pam. I wanna commend you for, um, you know, starting to, to sit down and strategically think about how the usage of these funds, you know, how you're gonna use these funds going forward. I think um, that is a very prudent plan for us. And so I appreciate you and your team and um, just everything you do. I appreciate the information that you've given us today. This is very good um, information. And I would love for you to share um, <clears throat> that information from Columbia Capital. I'd love, I'd love to read that. So thank you very much, Jamie. You're welcome. And I will send that white paper out as soon as we're done here, just to the whole committee. So if you want to read it, it's, it's a good read. And they have also told me that um, they will be sending updating their white papers as they get more information. And they will also help us look at other areas of the funding according to that American Rescue Plan. Maybe we can tap into more federal funds and they're gonna help us identify that. So um, I think that's extremely important too. Hey, Jamie, this is Rod. So I'm just trying to work this through in my mind and, and kind of the, the CARES Act when you went through that. So are there any COVID uh, mitigation measures or criteria that will have to be in place for this? Or is it too early to tell? Um, I, I think there's going to be, they, they have also mentioned, you know, a lot of money is going to COVID mitigation um, and that's from the federal piece. So that does not affect the amount that we're given, but there is, you know, uh, if you recall with the CARES Act, it was, it was driven towards uh, virtual and IT. It was really driven towards what can we do to you know, keep business going, um, but still keep our distance and seclusion and stuff to keep the virus from spreading. And so I think that's still an undertone here. And I think it's still going to be driven greatly to um, IT needs. And also, uh, I do believe it's going to be driven towards, you know, employees and those kind of things. Um, the cost of living and stuff is just really going up. So I think we need to keep that in mind too, as we look at all of this. But uh, I know that Rod, I've read several uh, several um, pieces of white paper and stuff that have come out of this. And they do. there's a very strong undertone of the COVID-19 and the um, virus mitigation. So as more of that comes out, I will just, I'll be glad to share all of that with you as well. But that's a separate pot of funding that I'm being told and it won't affect the 2.1 we're getting over two years, um, but there will be requirements against us. So as we get those, I'll be glad to send those out. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. Hey, Rod, Rod, it is a great question. The other thing that uh, I'd say just to add to what Jamie was saying is, uh, they are very, the, the money that they're handing out, not the, the 2.1 million, but the money, they're, the extra money that they're handing out is so, and it's not just about COVID, it's about the future. Anything like COVID that might impact us, they're wanting us to spend that money on being prepared uh, for yeah. the future and being able to take action quicker so we can we can react faster regardless of the threat. So it, it, it that's why we're trying to put together a, a truly comprehensive plan, uh, as Jamie was talking about, to have the mitigation side of it ready for the emergency management, for the uh, for the board, uh, for all city staff from the virtual world, from uh, securing 
And, and this is where we're really hoping to leverage a lot because it seems to be the most expensive, quite honestly, is the uh, IT side of this. Uh, securing our infrastructure in IT to make sure that we can uh, avoid hacking, avoid hackers, mm -hmm. securing our information. So, there yeah, Stan, Stan, if you talk to most, um, I would say, companies of all kinds across the United States, maybe the world, that's one of the number one th um, things that has keeps everybody up at night. So, it, it really is. It really yeah. is. That's 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 what we're trying to do, and. We're trying to leverage every, as Bob said, yes, we're a city of 10,500 or whatever, but we all know we're really not. And yeah, we're getting kind of shortchanged on some of it, but we're not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. But uh, we definitely are trying to have a plan prepared to take advantage of every dime we can get. And we're hoping that the county uh, works with us on, on the money that they're receiving as well, because uh, it's important countywide that we work as a team and work in all the cities together. It would be nice if we could uh, get a uh, centralized system set up where we're, we're all kind of sharing in that infrastructure to protect ourselves in our region. And one thing um, very well said, what Stan said, it's, it's a really great point. And one thing that came up while he was talking is it is very much IT driven and there is such a strong need for that. But what's happening in the IT world, um, it's just the way it is, but it's all subscription based now. So you can go in and like the CARES money, they would pay for like the initial, but the ongoing expense is something that I think that the maybe the state and federal government hasn't really considered because what that's doing is we have this huge need and we have to take care of our city in that way. But what that's doing is that's increasing our operational cost by quite a bit. So five and 10 years from now, when this is history, our operational expense is going to be quite a bit higher because of what's happening right now. It's a true need and we're just going to have to do it. We're gonna to have to use priority-based budgeting to the fullest to make sure that we are clearly identified on what the priorities are and how we spend that money. But um, it's just something to see when you're looking out into the future, it's all across the world. It's not just us, it's not just our country. That's what's happening, subscription-based, and so that increases our operator, operational costs quite a bit. So it's something to keep in your minds when you're looking at all this stuff, um, because it's certainly on the forefront of ours as well. And so uh, is there any more questions regarding that? I will send y'all out the documentation. And certainly if any of you have any questions about it, feel free to contact me. And if I don't know the answer, I'll let you know. And I will reach out to um, the people that are smarter than me that help guide me. So absolutely. There's one more thing I wanted to touch on. Um, I told y'all already that our audit begins next week. Um, we've already got our financials in place. We'll upload those to the auditors and let them begin. Um, and, and hopes of them reporting back to the board before June 30th of what the audit took place for 2020. There are, uh, there's gonna be a lot more um, closer eye on 2020 just because of COVID and all of the anomalies that happened. And, and that's fine. Um, I think that we are fully prepared for that. Um, but one of the things uh, we talked about the CID meeting and it was on my list to discuss um, the next CID meeting, um, we are gonna be discussing financial possibilities to start moving that project forward. And um, they already are very well aware of our credit rating, the downgrade, the SMP issue as to um, after we have a full year under our belt, they'll come back and rescore us. And um, so they've asked uh, Columbia Capital, Kalen, he's already come in and spoke one time to them. And he, he, him and Sid Douglas from Gilmore and Bell will come back in and speak again on maybe other possible financing options that we have. And so one of the... Um, one of the items that we've talked about for years and we talked about again yesterday is the build grant and that's a federal grant for projects transportation projects like this and uh, columbia capital has a great resource and his name is tom and he used to sit on the 
a federal transportation committee that would review these build grant applications. So he's a great resource for us. He's already reviewed um, the ones that we've done in the past and told us exactly what was the problem with those. So um, I think it's a good opportunity. Springfield got the build grant, I believe now two years ago. Um, but um, so I think it's an option for us that we go after and we look at. Um, the other thing is we have the possibility of the TIFIA loans through the federal government. Those are very low interest loans. But one of the th one of the caveats that we always talk about is it's very, very important when we start these projects um, that we have to follow the federal guidelines, federal and state guidelines for procurement, how the RFPs are written, how um, procurement is defined on those um, and it's not just procurement how the um, infrastructure is done all of those have to follow the federal guidelines or we will not have the possibility of going after state and federal funds so I push that and I might just say that way too much but I want to make sure that it's um, and grounded in everybody that we've got to just do a really good job of making sure those things are in place. So what we talked about yesterday, um, I think it was yesterday, I'm sorry, but what we talked about this week was the fact that there's a couple of things that we have to do in order to apply for some of these funds. We have to have a concept design in place for the 76 project. We have to um, follow the federal guidelines. We also have to have a cost benefit of analysis done prior to um, us applying for those. So we are also looking at that, working on that. Um, and again, the April CID committee um, will have our other resources in to help answer any questions. And just know that we're working on that. Y'all are the finance and capital committee, both of which are greatly involved and we'll be going forward in the projects. So I just wanted to keep you on the up and up of what we were talking about. And then the last thing is we've been um, just going around um, with uh, the task force talking about uh, factual information for the tourism tax renewal that is coming up. Um, and so I think Pam and Jonas have done just a, a tremendous job of doing the task force. Really, I just sit there and answer questions if I need to. So anyway, that's what we've been doing. Um, and then I will answer any questions or we can end this meeting if y'all want to. So that's up to y'all. Anybody have any questions? Would someone like an offer or a motion to adjourn? This is Rod, so move. Motion. Michael, I'll second it. Second. Sensing you want to vote, all in favor, let's do a roll call for adjournment. All right. Akers. Yes. Dobbins. Yes. Uh, Milton. Yes. Romine. Yes. Yancey. Yes. Simmons. Yes. Pinkley. Yes. And Buckley. Thank you all. Thank you.